What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X build on this device. And as you can see from here, this is the latest build as of right now. This is the 10th February 2021 build and here there are a few more changes but this ROM right now has been one of the most stable experience that I have been getting. It's about 1.4 GB and I would say yes there is one disappointment that you do not get any stock camera over here fine for me because I have installed ANX camera over here as you are noticing so I'll show you that later on but let me show you the about section first so here in the Android version we have the Evolution X logo up top and the Android version is Android 11 of course as you are noticing and let me go back we have the Evolution X version as 5.4 bombastic still and this is the official build of course and the security patch is still of latest February 5th, 2021. And there we have the stock kernel as perf G kernel. And the build maintainer is of course Joe Hua. And the build date here it says February 11th. So let me show you some more stuff. So the stock launcher is still pixel launcher. And the experience is pretty much stock Androidish, of course. The wallpaper I have been using over here is from the Walpi app. I'll link that below in the description, do not worry. And if you do not know how to flash this ROM on this device, you can click on the card right there. And on the stock launcher again, we have the Google's Discover page to the left side and swiping up gets you to the app drawer, swiping down gets you to the like quick settings panel. And here the widgets and stuff, everything is working fine. But again, there is no double tap to sleep here anywhere on the home screen. But of course, there is the double tap to sleep on the status bar. Let me show you works flawlessly. Let me show you the like fingerprint scanner speed. As you can see on the like always on display, the fingerprint scanner speed is pretty fast and pretty snappy. Let me show you from the lock screen right now. Again, as you just saw, the fingerprint scanner speed is fairly, fairly fast. No issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner, even from the lock screen or the like always on display. So I just enable a night light as you can see now from the lock screen. As you can see, unlocked fine. Now again, from the lock screen with my left hand thumb, unlocked fine. Now from the always on display with night light turned on. Okay, so it did not unlock for once. Now it did, but in real life usage, I would say I did not face any kind of like problems with the fingerprint scanner. It unlocked always. So very reliable fingerprint scanner experience in my personal opinion. Talking about the stock in call UI still has the pixel dialer. So that's why there is no call recording option as such over here. And faulty calling and VO Wi-Fi both are working super fine here. You should not worry about those. Now let's talk about the camera thing. Well, you won't get any kind of stock camera on this ROM, but I have installed the ANX camera and the Google camera as well over here. So let me first show you the ANX camera, but before that, let me tell you, I have installed it with Magisk, so you have to install the ANX camera version 185R, which is for Android R or Android 11 with the Magisk only because that's a Magisk module. And if you do not know how to install this ANX camera version 185R on your device, you can click on the card right over there to see how can you flash this ANX camera. Now with this ANX camera, I have tested it a lot. Now let me tell you, the like, camera is super stable. There is the portrait mode and stuff, everything is working. And even for the videos, we have all these 4K 60fps option and the wide angle lens, telephoto lens, everything is working flawlessly, no issues whatsoever. Even with the front camera and stuff, everything is working. But let me tell you, if you try a 48 megapixel mode, your like picture sizes will be a little lesser in my opinion. So yes, the 48 megapixel mode only is broken. Other than that, everything is working perfectly fine with this ANX camera or the MIUI camera over here. If you flash it separately, of course. Now talking about the Google camera, here I have installed the Unix version of the Google camera. If you want to get it and set it up like me, you can click on the card right over there. And here also the wide angle lens, telephoto lens, everything is working fine with the Google camera 7 Unix version. So it should be working super fine. Let me show you what version I'm rocking over here. This is the version 2.5 as you can see, Gcam 7.3.018 by Unix 05. Let me show you the quick settings panel again. There are still a lot of things. Let me edit and add a couple of things over here. There is the like oxygen is kind of screen recorder. Let me always agree. And from here in the settings, there is the resolution changing option. And then we have the bitrate changing option. And there is the number of frames, audio source, video orientation, etc. changing options. So yes, the oxygen screen recorder is still there if you want to use it. Also, there is the stock Android-ish screen recorder. Let me show you. This is the Android 11 screen recorder. With this, you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. So two screen recorders that you get over here. So that's a great feature in my opinion. And here we also have this FPS counter. So if you want to see the FPS 
always on top left of the screen you can just see it by enabling this fps counter over here really sorry for the background noise guys and here we have the reboot toggle so if you want to directly reboot to recover your fast boot from here you can do that i mean not fast boot i think just like reboot normally or recovery and power off options are there but definitely directly rebooting to recovery is really possible with this no issues whatsoever we still have all the like same kind of look the evolver settings the battery display sound etc and inside system we do have this system update section from here of course you can check for updates but my device is right now decrypted so i definitely use the manually updating process if you do not know how to manually update just watch that video from the card right there and if you have magisk installed instead of the fcrypt disabler you can just flash the rom and the magisk and reboot so that's how you manually update and here in the gesture settings we have a lot of things like the gesture navigations and here if you go into the gesture navigation settings we find a lot of things like this show pill you can hide the pill bar over here this pill kind of thing over here the long kind of thing so as you can see you can also customize the length of the gesture bar so that's great and also you can enable haptic feedback then back gesture animation and stuff everything is there and the good thing is again you can hide this pill let me go back we have the two and three button navigations too then we have the swipe to take screenshot now this is the best thing that occurred on this build i would say but it has some bugs still but this is the first time it has been implemented i guess so i'll show you this swipe to take screenshot thing a little bit later but let me show you there is this power menu kind of thing and there is the device control and stuff and in the customization section you can enable the advanced reboot and that's why i have these advanced reboot options over here and also the google smart home kind of things shows up over here so that's working great and we have some more things like switch screen off and stuff and quickly open camera by double tapping the power button and stuff inside front camera sound effects we also have the star word sounds then these kind of sounds are there the gear wheel and stuff and camera led you can disable that if you want to for some reason and the shock keyboard over here is gboard because this build of course includes the g apps so let me quickly show you the long screenshot kind of thing so here let me assume that you are in the settings or somewhere so here if you take a screenshot by just sliding three fingers as you can see right now if you can tap scroll and then you have to press this long screenshot option and as you can see sometimes it doesn't work as you are noticing so that's what i was talking about sometimes it simply does not work and again i'm in the settings i'm trying to take a screenshot i click scroll and long screenshot okay so now it works but it doesn't scroll all the way let me show you again we are in the accessibility kind of over here on the bottom then there is like also you can scroll a little bit down over here but it doesn't work in the screenshot so sometimes it doesn't work let me show you in the battery settings over here i click on scroll then long screenshot okay so as you can see it says no more content to capture so this is what i was talking about sometimes it doesn't work in the settings and stuff but if you are in twitter or somewhere and you can take a screenshot as you can see in the long screenshot let me show you okay so again it shows no more room to capture so yeah that's how it is right now but let me show you one more time in twitter i click on long screenshot so yeah that's how much it captures then it stops so yeah this is how it works and sometimes it's buggy so that's how it is the long screenshot but sometimes it does work so in my opinion it is great that the long screenshot feature is actually working sometimes over here but yes it will get better with time and with future updates pretty sure also one more thing that has been fixed over here that was not working ever since on the android 11 updates on the evolution x rom is the google assistant let me show you hey google as you can see it is working super fine so as you can see from this voice match section there is the okay google keyword and of course the hey google also works let me show you okay google as you can see again google assistant popped right here so working fine hey google as you can see again the google assistant is working super fine over here so that's a great thing in my opinion that the google assistant has been completely fixed over here with the keyword even it's working on the latest evolution x on the redmi k20 pro and in the evolver settings we get everything else that it was with evolution x previously and in the lock screen and stuff we still do not get the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner that i do miss over here not gonna lie and here we have the fingerprint scanner animations and stuff and as you can see plethora of animations are still there so you can choose from a lot of them and then we have the fingerprint scanner icons and as you can see these are all the icons 
it is pretty similar to previous builds in my opinion and screen of fingerprint and stuff like that is working super fine here then we have this lock screen charging info works fine media cover art and stuff etc are there and everything else is pretty similar like the advanced report and stuff of course i have enabled that and in the notification settings we have the heads up disabling option and we have some more things like the vibrate on connect call waiting etc inside themes we can customize the dark theme then clock style accent color picker is there also you can choose from these plenty of options of the accent colors as you are noticing and also if you scroll down you can also change the volume panel style as you can see with the stock AOSP panel this is how it looks like and you can expand it just like this and also you can change it to AOSP expanded and the compact audio and the tiled option so these kind of customizations makes evolution x a really stable experience with a lot of customizations in my opinion and in the quick settings panel there is the battery estimates and stuff then we have auto brightness icon tiles column rope number customization extra options are there then if you scroll down more we have these gestures like the brightness control on the status bar so you can still slide a finger on the status bar and adjust the brightness so yeah these are pretty cool options and we have the screen of power button toggle torch of course double tap to sleep and stuff everything is there let me go back we have the hardware buttons and here we have some more options and inside animation you can change the holy way animation pretty much inside misc we have the gaming mode the smart pixels and the charging animation as well and there is the usb configuration too so you can change that the radio info you can see that from here and you can force some brightness values for the always on display so yeah that's pretty much it for the customizations i just like showed you quickly because i have shown it multiple times in previous videos so that's the reason why and in the battery settings let me show you the screen on time over here and this is how the battery settings looks like well the charging cycle and stuff etc are missing but yes the battery temperature is there and there is the screen on time the last full charge and stuff and in terms of battery life i have been getting about six hours of screen on time over here in my opinion that's like pretty decent in my personal usage and 18 watt fast charging is working super fine no issues with that inside sound this is how it looks like we have the show volume panel on the left customization then we have the volume steps and stuff and if you scroll down more we have the pulse visualizer and there is the dial pad tone screen locking sound charging vibration the screenshot sound etc disabling option and inside didact sound over here we have the mi audio didact so you can choose from these many headsets option and there is also the hi-fi audio option and there is the sound preset you can customize that too and i would say the sound output via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is amazing over here no issue so far over here with that the display settings and here we have the dark theme night light light display etc and inside color calibration we have the rgb customization and we have the hue saturation intensity and contrast customization of course let me scroll down again over here we have the double tap to wake pocket detection blurs option and the dc dimming mode and inside security we still do not have the face unlock or something like that or there is no app lock over here by default but you can use third party apps for the app lock i guess and here the face unlock is kind of still missing over here but again it might be added in the future updates and right now let me open a couple of apps over here and show you the app one of speeds and the ram management let's open chrome then this files app now let's open facebook now let's open twitter now let's open play store now let's open instagram and google home now also let's open spotify did i open youtube i pretty much forgot let me see okay so spotify is still loading so right now let's try opening youtube and what else should i open flipkart now let's open the telegram app right now let me open all the apps from memory okay so files has been removed from memory facebook is still there in memory twitter still there in memory play store still there in memory instagram still there in memory google home is in memory in spotify as you can see still in memory and again twitter is in memory youtube has been removed from memory but yes in my opinion the memory management should be good enough for day-to-day -day usage and the memory management is not too bad but yes this is a 6 gb ram unit and for this kind of variant i would say the memory management is still great so that's what i think and here are the android and geekbench scores of this rom so in my opinion this performance of this rom has been improved quite a lot and i'm really liking the performance over here as of right now 
Now let's talk about some other things like the DRM info and stuff. If you have not broken the DRM certification like me and I have flashed the persistent image, that's why my DRM certificate shows as L3 right now. So I'm just not gonna show you that. But yes, if your like DRM certificate is intact in MIUI or stock ROM, it will be intact over here too. Talking about safety net, yes, on this ROM, it passes the safety net right out of the box, but after flashing magisk, it breaks. But also you can check out that ANX camera flashing guide video. And on that, I have shown how to get this banking apps totally working on the ROM itself. And you can have your SBI card, Google Pay, etc. apps working super fine if you follow that video from the card right there. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNX signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.